Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I want to talk about storage in your home server if you want to try and use a old retired enterprise server as your home server it costs a little bit more in the power bill but what storage do you really want and need in that and um, yeah I have some different options here on the table that I want to go through and talk through and mostly it's gonna be based on that you want this big powerful server that you want to use for a little bit of homework kind of ish so um, yeah let's um, let's let's check what I have and um, you are free to use the comment section below and tell me what you're using it's very common for you guys to have different budgets for this it goes from absolutely no money at all to ridiculous so um, please keep that in mind that when I say that we can fill the server up with used laptop hard drives it might not be for you you might want something completely different and well feel free to go that route then <laughs> so but let's check it out so here is my little table full of good stuff um, from the old days we were using these three and a half inch hard drives and they are still in use because the storage capacity on these bigger hard drives well they're usually way bigger than if we go to the smaller size here two and a half inch um, I believe you can get these up to about 16 terabytes today um, but you can also get that in SSDs you can actually get way more than that in an SSD but then you're you're definitely also paying more but you can actually get 16 terabytes in a hard drive like this um, fairly cheap which is still very expensive if you have a server that uses 3.5 inch hard drives you very often have the choice this is a SAS disk and this is a SATA disk this one has a star on it because I know it's dutchy as heck it um, yeah I have to I've taken it out of whatever it was running in because it started messing up and doing weird stuff but this is a Western Digital Green Drive these were meant to be power saving and go in a regular PC very many of my servers can use this um, without even blinking like um, up here I have the IBM X3650 model 1 and it will very happily take a drive like that um, they're not in right now but they're right now this is a Seagate 600 gigabyte oh 450 gigabyte drive it's actually just like the one that is on the table but I can replace that drive and I can put in a 2 terabyte drive like this the server up there actually has a limit of 2 terabytes with the built-in rate controller that it has if I want to use more than 2 terabytes I need to replace the rate controller but that's another story I have done videos on that um, so this is a very cheap way to go you can use old retired PC hardware like SATA drives it's it's very cheap they're not as efficient well you know there is there is storage capacity and there is speed and then there is IO um, and you might if you are using your home server for yourself and just streaming video of it doesn't matter you can use a bunch of these and you will have no problem whatsoever if you have like a server and it's being used by 50 people well then this SATA port um, delivers a, a IOs about 75 to 50 IOs per hard drive and that might become a limitation IOs means um, kind of how many instructions it can handle per second and 75 well it's a lot but it can become a limit like my example is usually illustrator if you're working in illustrator and you're making a brochure or something every time you scroll up and down or do something in illustrator it um, just checks if all the pictures are still there and if it's a brochure well there might be 150 pictures in there so it has to well go check if those 150 pictures are still okay 
I don't know if that's exactly true, but well, it becomes a limiting factor. So, back then people decided to make a better one for server use, so they made the SAS drive, and this is a, well, it's a Sun Solaris, it's really a Seagate, but Sun has branded this one, it's 450 gigabytes, they come smaller, they come bigger, but it's a SAS connector, you can recognize a SAS connector by there not being any space between here, and if we look together with the SATA, you can see that there's a hole between these two. That means that you can put a SATA hard drive in a SAS server, but you can't put a SAS hard drive in a PC, because that is usually how it goes in a PC. But these SAS drives has better I.O. So typically a SAS drive like this can handle about, uh, I believe it's about 120 to 150 I.O.s. Where, so about double as the SATA hard drive. So it does better. So if you are a lot of people that are working on the server, you will have less lag on a SAS drive than a SATA drive. The speed of a SAS drive might not be faster. If you're just copying a damn big file, well, you might not see any improvement. Actually, you might sometimes see that SAS drives are slower than a good old SATA drive, but you get the higher IOs and depending on what you need the server to do, this might be good or this might be bad. If you see big storage arrays from back in the day, when, well, before SSDs was something that you could pay for, you will see that this storage arrays has a lot of small drives. Like this 450 gigabyte drive would be together with 40 or 100 other drives and that was just to be able to handle the IOs. Of course it also gave some storage capacity but the IOs was the important things. If you're in a big business and you have a thousand people working at the same time, IO becomes really important. For your home use you very often don't need this. This is just overdoing it. And definitely today where you can go and purchase SSDs, well the IO is not as important as it has been because SSD will do that shit way better. So uh, yeah, these were the good old hard drives and they came in very good big sizes. SAS drives are now also available in 10 terabyte drives. Um, so yeah, there is that. I did install two SAS drive 10 terabytes down in the Hewlett Packard storage box down there and um, yeah could probably put this in down there as well so servers started using these smaller drives and that was of course um, space saving in the servers when you're just going for the ios uh, you want a lot of spinning disks well you want something like this a regular server with a bunch of drives right like this one has 16 drives so if you Occupy that with SAS drives and each of them has 150 IOs. Well, you actually start to get up there Maybe a couple of thousand IOs um, if you configure this right so servers um, Switched more or less most of them switched to 2.5 inch hard drives because well For a boot drive or something this was plenty and if you needed a lot of IO Well, you just got some more of them and uh, configure them in a in a RAID and then you got the the combined IOs out of them. So that was cool enough. These were pretty expensive and if you're gonna do that, if if you have a server and wanna use that at home, this 73.4 gigabytes is not gonna be very big today. So you can actually also just take some old hard drive out of a laptop and stuff in there. Usually that will work fine in your home server. I know that my Lenovo's over here, well they will they will do this very happily. There are no problem whatsoever. You can get some that are way bigger for way less. So this one is 160 gigabytes. So it's a hundred a uh, hundred ish gigabytes bigger than this one and I'm sure I didn't pay diddly squat for this. I do believe that I got it well forgot to dodge. So um you can more or less just get a lot of old 
laptop hard drives they are not as stable they are not as fast well they it might actually be just as fast as this one this one is an oldie this one is is a bit newer so it might also be a bit faster it might be a faster technology that it uses out front but it's not as it's not as well built but it might do the job very well if you put in a bunch of these some sort of safety would be a good thing um, if you want to put in a rate card fine if you want to do some software rate fine but yeah you need some kind of safety and you know the crappier hard drive you put in the server better safety is important but it's doable i have i have done that for my home use i have had regular laptop hard drives running and we actually have that right now kind of ish if we go over here to this server the awesome lenovo x3650 model 5 and take out a hard drive we will see that there's a seagate hard drive in there and this seagate came out of a usb external box shaking drives it's called well these usb boxes are way cheaper uh, it's a cheaper way to get a four terabyte hard drive than just going out and buying an empty drive i didn't save the boxes for the two and a half inch hard drives i saved the box for the three and a half inch hard drive i did this on some 10 terabyte drives as well which i have put in my synology nas but i saved quite a bunch by buying a hard drive in a box like this i um, pulled it out of the box and put it in my well in this case my synology in um, in this case i put it in my server so that is also something that is doable these two and a half inch hard drives they um they don't become as big size wise as the as the three and a half inch hard drives regularly there is something called sma shindle magnetic a i forget what the last thing is but it means that it it stores the data like shindles on a house which means that you can't just remove a layer because you have to remove the layers that are beneath it which is a problem if you want to save data or change data on it every time you want to do that well it has to do a lot more work it has to move a bunch of data around it does that very nicely you don't have to think about it but it takes a bit longer and it wears on the hard drive it's still usable and especially if you're using a rate controller that can cache some of this and and handle the operations in the background you will almost not notice it but you get these for very cheap so there are also other options like um, if you are running ESXi um, as a hypervisor on your server you can actually boot on a USB stick I very much like this um, just having the operating system on a USB stick I just took some off the shelf I have more laying around this one is actually for the for firmware updating a server but you can very comfortably put this inside a server and put the VMware ESXi on it and it will boot the server it's um, it's very neat because I am yet to see a USB stick break on one of my servers I have heard about it at work that they have been down replacing a broken USB stick but it doesn't happen very often so it's rather a stable solution that you just put in a USB stick if you want it to boot uh, well you can more or less you can put in this USB stick and if the ESXi on the USB stick uses some storage some shared storage somewhere else well you can more or less go down and put another USB stick in with a newer version of ESXi as long as it's pointing to the same storage and um, the m amount of work is minimum to upgrade that um, turn down the server put in a new USB stick and uh, turn it up again and then I'm sure there are some settings that you need to to do but it also keeps the operating system and the data on the server separate which is also just a, um, a very nice thing these days we have more or less moved um, more and more to SSD so I have a couple of Samsung SSDs laying around here 
these are good for my servers all of my servers will work perfectly flawlessly with these Samsung drives there are other servers that don't like third-party hardware and especially newer servers will well the fans might go haywire on them and yeah I always get criticism for for pointing this out but well there is some servers that when you put this in it will think whoa there's something that I do not know I need to cool that way more than anything else in the world and it just warps up the fans to close to a 100% and the server is just noisy as heck and yeah I don't believe it's really necessary because those servers are so full of sensors so it knows exactly what the temperature is inside of the server so it's more or less just doing this to to mess with you to have you buy original hardware for that server brand or those server brands or whatever server brand so but SSDs is a really good option and um, when we are talking about IOs well SSDs will knock them out of the ballpark because where this one might have a 150 IOs this one might have a hundred and fifty thousand IOs so it's it's not even worth comparing them so these are this is a one terabyte this is a 512 gigabyte and compared to this old one which is 73.4 gigabytes well it's you kind of need at least eight of them just to to replace this one and the ios will never get close to this one and the storage capacity is still bigger than eight of these and the speed well yeah if you can put in ssds you can put in way less of them and still be good ssds wear out over time and there are different sorts both of these are the pro and they last way longer than the evo drives i don't have any evo drives laying around waiting for a video that's stupid of me i think i might have the box yeah i've kept some of the boxes they are empty unfortunately but the evo drives are meant for pc use and they are not as durable as the pro drives but they are still awesome oh this is actually an nvme so that's a bad example that's okay so but it's still an evo so let's not uh, let's not go into details for most users they are just as fast as the pro but they're not as doable and if you transfer really big files and they will kind of drop down in speed after a few gigabytes of transfer where the pro drives keeps going if you have the budget for some ssds these are awesome to put in your server they are also consuming less power and well there is almost no downsides to them the next level of storage are the nvme nvme is like this one this one up here is actually more or less an ssd it's to be compared with the samsung over here it's just another form factor this is the m.2 form factor but it's the same technology as the hard drive form factor down here h ssd this is an m.2 ssd below it is an nvme ssd and i see that's the box of um, that we just looked at so this is a samsung i am really of the opinion that samsung makes the best ssds uh, and nvmes on the m.2 uh, they are not the cheapest but they make some really good products speed wise so they, they're kind of cool but nvme ssd is um, is very fast and not really that much more expensive the form factor does that you can't really put them in where the hard drives is that would be neat i did actually purchase a hard drive where you could put in two m.2 but that was ssds so they had made a hard drive i did a video on it it looked like an ssd like this and then you open it up and there were room for putting in two ssd but m.2 ssds inside and you could fill it in the hard drive base um, it was kind of a neat form factor should really do some more with that someday but it um, it used the ssd version of the m.2 nvme will just then again beat the ssd out of the ballpark um, they are like seven times faster than an ssd 
read and write and their IOs are also usually very much higher so if you really want to kick some data through your server well this is the way to go and I bought this stupid little adapter here from China it was like a few I think it was six dollars or something and it fits one of each you can put an NVMe in here and you can put an M.2 SSD the M.2 SSD it needs a SATA connector here that can go down to the servers well it can go down to the rate controller but the NVMe will go down through the the PCI lanes here and be directly connected to the CPU very fast so you could put in a bunch of these how many slots you have available in your server and you might be able to get quite a few NVMe drives and SSD drives in there they are not connected they they get the power from the same place but they are not connected um, data wise so yeah there's another card that I showed in a previous video which is this older version of kind of this where they have built a nice card and I purchased this just to um, to advertise bargain hardware which um, yeah, let's you know the drill it will be in the description if you want to go visit bargain hardware I'm not gonna be promoting them in every video but I bought this just to mess around with I never got it to work in a server I got it to work in my PC so I actually need to go back to this and try it out in a newer server and see if that was the problem I got some really good suggestions in the comments of that video that well the the UEFI bias on that server was too old I needed to go with a server with a newer UEFI bias and that might be the case or there might be some stupid setting in the bias that needs to be set to something different but this is more or less the same as this it's just more professionally done like in here we have four SSDs they are they're like the top one this Chinese ripoff King Ding King Dian which is of course so close to Kingston that you get a bad taste in your mouth there but they have put four of these in here and it's it's based on a regular RAID controller dash HBA so it's it's just a hot dish controller and they have put four hard drives which just happens to be SSDs on here and it serves that to the server which is kind of neat so there is that option too this is an old one it's from 2012 so it's not as fast as this one over here it's also not as cheap as this one over here so there is really no good reason to do that um, this is 400 gigabytes of data over here the small NVMe drive is 500 gigabytes and the King Don 240 gigabytes so yeah it would be cheaper to go this way and faster and less problematic so but it's an option and I think it's it's a cool design and it has a cool name it's a warp drive so um, yeah Star Trek fans out there you need to go to the warp you need to go to warp speed so with all these storage solutions even something newer is, is on its way and I don't have one of those but it's um, it looks like a RAM block more or less it's um, it's they call it persistent persistent memory which just means that you have some memory that you put in your server and when you write to it it doesn't it doesn't erase it when the power goes off um, I did test that in a server uh, four years ago I just went in and checked that was the IBM slash Lenovo X38 X6 which was a 4U server with 8 cores and a good bunch of everything and it, and it did cost an arm and a leg at that time IBM slash Lenovo was calling it EX Flash and I actually have a server and it's kind of funny because you should think that it's the brand new server or something that is compatible but it's actually the Lenovo X3650 Model 4 that one is able to use EX Flash today Intel has come out with something new that is about the same thing and they call it Intel Optane um, kind of well I'm, I'm just pointing showing you this RAM block because it looks like a RAM block it looks like a RAM block with heat sinks 
as far as I've seen. The EX Flash looked like a RAM block with heat sinks on it. This one actually also has a heat sink, but never mind. So th that's kind of the new thing that you um, you can put in that you can put storage in your RAM slots and they are available in really big sizes and they are kind of not giving them away but well it's a new thing I'm sure that I've forgotten some kind of weird solution like a rewritable CD or DVD or something leave it in the comments if you're using something completely different there's also you can also connect iSCSI or something to another storage solution and have the storage that way but well these are the most common ones that I that I kind of use and if you're just starting with servers and the budget is limit go with regular laptop hard drives you will get a you'll get a long way with that and if you're using some kind of a software RAID solution you can often use some laptop hard drives and you can put in a single SSD somewhere and it can be used as a cache drive and it can kind of make that cheap solution way faster than even putting in a lot of SAS drives so uh, yeah cheap way do leave in the comments below what your storage solution is in your server so that everyone else can learn from you there are way smarter people than me in the comments so if you're way smarter than me please be in the comments so thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day Bye-bye.